Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Verse 101, class is in session. Pay attention to the teachings that's from Andrew and Derek. I mean, these guys making the killer with no competition. Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. Everybody make some noise. Mess with them, you get destroyed. They cannot be beat. Take a seat. Watch them do their thing on the MIC. Face the feet. They cannot be seen like JC. Oh my goodness, it's in killing spree. Yeah? Luke Curtis, and you're listening to Wrestling IQ 101. Enjoy. Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Wrestling IQ 101. When I'm not hosting our podcast, I'm usually at collarandelbowbrand.com. That's right, Collar and Elbow is the only place that combines wrestling with street attire. And I know what you're thinking. I want to look fashionable too, and I also want to save 10%. So head over to collarandelbowbrand.com and use the promo code WIQ101. And look fashionable and save some money. And now, on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, and you can listen to Wrestling IQ 101 right here on YouTube. But And you can hit that subscribe button so you can check out past episodes, new episodes like this one, and uh, even future ones coming out. Plus, you can follow us on Wrestling IQ 101 across all platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And today, my guest is none other than Cerebus, man. How's it going? Good, good. Everything's great. It's uh, another uh, wonderful day on the Jersey Shore. Yeah, absolutely. Is it raining by you? Because it's coming down by me. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. I yeah. actually just uh, cleaned up the garden a little bit, took everything off the uh, the, the uh, hangers just to make sure nothing gets uh, blown around. Yeah, Ooh. and it, it's going to be awesome because I'm coming down to you in just a couple of days. I mean, I'm coming down to Boardwalk to Buzz, Atlantic City, the shore. I can't wait to see you. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a hell of a show. Chadman's really uh, and John Wise they really 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 put together quite a, uh, a spectacle down there when it comes to a convention at the Showboat. Um, three days, you know, standalone wrestling, ICW. There's some really great shows uh, coming up that weekend, and uh, I think I think altogether I think there's like five shows, wow. which is wild for a three day span. Yeah. And um, obviously, you also have all of the um, the actual convention. There's speed dating. There's movies. There's gosh, comedy clubs, at nightclub, the whole nine yards. It's going to be a, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting weekend. Yeah, yeah. They're going to like you said, comedy clubs, uh, movies. I mean, uh, plus you. I mean, Val Venus is going to be uh, the king of cannabis. I mean, uh, right. are, are you, you going to smoke right. up with him? <laughs> Yeah, it's good. it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. I think there's gonna be a lot of people uh, waiting online to see him since he's uh, gotten into the uh, cannabis industry. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. So I have to. We gotta start off with this, man. Uh, what does VVD stand for? <laughs> Where did you see that? <laughs> uh, I, I I do my research here. <laughs> <laughs> so VVD. So VVD was vicious, mini delicious. That was. Um, I, so I, I I trained back in like ninety seven ninety eight uh, with uh, Mike Iron uh, Mike Sharp, and um, you know I, I I came out of training and um, there, was, there was a lot of there was a lot of indie groups you know the Jersey indie scene was was wild back in the you know late nineties early two thousands you had you know uh, some smaller guys like the EWA you had Tommy Rumsby running some uh, the WWC shows uh, obviously you had. Uh, Fat Frank with Jersey All Pro. You had uh, uh, Donnie B doing uh, Phoenix Championship. It was just, it was wild. Yeah, and I think NWS, uh, Joe Panzerino was just starting NWS, if I remember correctly. And CVW was just starting to kind of uh, get their footing. So, um, I, 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 you know, I was, I was a young kid. I didn't really know what to, uh, <laughs> what to name myself. And, uh, I tried to do the cocky, arrogant, you know, heel gimmick, and so I thought, well, and I also wanted, I was a bigger kid, so I wanted to be the, you know, vicious, and then, you know, delicious at the end, and obviously I think Bagwell and Norton were doing a vicious and delicious thing, so mm-hmm. I was a vicious and really delicious, and that's uh, where that DVD came from. Yeah, and right, when you started out, too, you just had, like, a black sing- singlet on, right? And yeah. <laughs> well, I started out with the, uh, the, uh, you know the late '90s, uh, mm-hmm. everybody uh, indie worker gimmick where I just had the tearaway uh, Adidas snap pants that you could just tear off, and uh, the black singlet, and the uh, and for a while I 
was uh, I, I tagged with a this, uh, one of you know a great friend who now lives in um, Oklahoma. He moved out of Oklahoma. His name's Ron Post, and uh, he used to run the Empire Wrestling Alliance. Who really ran around like Brick and, uh, and um, Jackson, and all you know that section of Jersey. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did a tag team. We were supposed to be like the heels from like New York. So we dressed like I had I had a black singlet and I had black slacks over the singlet. And, to tell you how hard it was to wrestle in black slacks, uh-huh. um, well, it, yeah, it was miserable. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you, the only comparison I could say is like right, uh, Orange Cassidy, right? Because he wrestles in those blue jeans now. Oh, he, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I, he's, I couldn't imagine. I see that. And was, I, I think like uh, Diamond Dallas Page wrestled in jeans. Yeah, and it's just that's got to be miserable. I, I, I couldn't imagine now after doing that for a while. I just, uh, just, just uh, my, 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 my skin. Doesn't do well under that. I could, you know, I take the pants off and I got nine million pimples all over my leg. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> all the heat. It, actually, it's funny because we had Pete uh, Pete Gas on. He said he was going through like a pair of pants like a like every couple of days. And, like, oh so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously they were wrestling a much you know uh, uh, a bigger schedule than we were. But yeah. even with you know the maybe two shows I was doing a month at the time, I, I'd have to replace those black flags at least once a month. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it was nice because during uh, the Titan shows and when you were the Titan killer, I brought my girlfriend with me and she doesn't really watch wrestling. She doesn't know anything about wrestling. Uh, It was like one of her first shows and she saw you and she was like, holy shit, this guy's like the biggest guy she's ever seen out of all these wrestlers. (laughs) Uh, What goes into conditioning to to be that, you know, massive? You know, I'm I'm, I'm just about 45 years old. So it... It takes a lot more than it would for a twenty, you know, twenty-five year old. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm in the gym twice a day, six days a week, um, about three hours total a day, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm actually completely vegan. I take it no animal products, no, you know, no eggs, no meat, no dairy, no anything of that sort. Um, so it's a cleaner. Uh, diet until kind of the weekends uh, come around and then there's a little bit of beer and a little bit of junk food, vegan junk food, but junk food nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the weekends kind of throw me off a bit. But um, yeah, no, it's just a lot of a lot of people go into the gym and and, and, and I'm not trying to crap on anybody, but a lot Mm -hmm. of people go into the gym and they think, hey, just because I'm in the gym, I'm doing something. Which you are. You're there. That's the biggest part. You know, you're through the door. Mm -hmm. But you have to do the research, and you have to know what you're doing. And that uh, one that can take time. Obviously, as you get older, you realize what works, what doesn't. Uh, but also, even even if you're 22, 23 years old, mm-hmm. you should be, you know, looking up articles and and and, and you know, going through books or whatever mm-hmm. to learn what works. Because everybody wants to just go in and do big, heavy uh, compound movements. You know that the bench press or the, the shoulder press and all these big compound movements when it's literally the smaller, you know, exercises, the, the flies and the, you know, mm-hmm. whatnot that uh, really build the body, you know. Yeah. Just, you know, she was like gawking and I was like, no, like, uh, <laughs> I'm with you. So <laughs> Cause she was like, this is the biggest guy she's ever seen. And uh, awesome. yeah, so it was awesome. To, uh, and, you know, you really uh, put on quite a match and, uh, you know, you talked about uh, being vegan. You're not you're not drinking like three protein eggs like Hulk Hogan just out of the shell. No, like we're, we're, uh, we're, I, I used to, but uh-huh. uh, now uh, you know we're, we're very lucky. There's vegan proteins that you know. And I always I always tell people when when they talk about you know oh you're vegan how are you this big and there are vegan bodybuilders like influencers now. Yeah. And I always liken it to the the biggest and the the strongest mammal in the jungle is the gorilla, and the gorilla is a vegan. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, the, the gorilla can literally tear a human being apart with its bare hands. And yeah. they, they eat plants, man. That's that's what it comes down to. I tell people it's all the time, tofu, there's more protein in a block of tofu than there is in a chicken breast. And I have a lot less calories. So really? I know it's a lot cheaper, too. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> So and it's pretty cool because you're at the shows, you get to take pictures with the fans. You have eight by tens. Uh, do you really like connecting with the fans? I love connecting with them. So it's it's funny because I had this discussion uh, uh, just with uh, uh, the big deal, Craig Steele, and then uh, and with Fox Senior. I've uh, mm-hmm. had this conversation. You know, they're like, "Hey, brother, you got to sell merch. You got to sell merch. You got to sell merch." And uh, eight by tens and t-shirts and gimmicks. Blah 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 blah. I. I 
I just want to connect with the fans. I, I, I want to be out there. I, I, I don't want to feel like, okay, here I am taking a picture with you, shaking your hand, giving you my time just so you'll buy a piece of my merch. Mm -hmm. That's why any of these shows, I, I never saw any merch. And I, it's, it's, a, it's a loss on me because I could, I could be making money. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when we just did that, uh, what is the LTW show down in Tom's River under that bubble down there. Mm -hmm. It was LTW uh, standalone, kind of like a, a, a group show, SWF. And I had, a, <laughs> and it, it really kind of makes me blush. Because I had a, a, literally a line of kids, probably 20, 30 deep, just standing there waiting patiently in line to take their pictures with me, which was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't want, you know, I don't, I don't want to feel, if the kids or, or any, anyone for that matter to feel like the only reason I'm taking my time to take a picture with them and talk to them is because I'm trying to sell merch. So I never, I, I never get merch made or anything like that. And I also feel weird selling stuff like that. So, yeah. but I love the fans. I, I, I have a blast. It's, it's kind of hard because I'm a, I, I pride myself on being a genuinely decent guy, a good guy. Yeah. And, um, I always have to kind of, you know, because here I am playing this nasty heel that doesn't talk and just wants to hurt people. And mm -hmm. here I am, you know, at intermission if I go out and I'm, you know, smiling, shaking hands and kissing babies, basically. So it's <laughs> it's a little much sometimes. Yeah, well, I mean, they're getting to see the best of both worlds. So they're getting to see the ass right. kicker and, and the human. And right. it's pretty cool. You know, it must have been pretty emotional. Uh, they, re, they reformed the trifecta. Uh, they rebranded the Trifecta Championship belt. It's a beautiful championship belt, by the way. Yeah, yeah. and and you're the <laughs> first guy. Story about that after that. <laughs> yeah, you're the first guy to win that. I mean, how does that feel? That was great. Yeah, you know, and there was there's a lot of trust there. Um, mm -hmm. I think that you know Chad and uh, Ch you know Chad's the driving force behind that. You know, he was he was the guy who really came up with the belt. But you have obviously you have. Rob and you have you have everybody else that's involved in it, Eric Sims, all those guys who were involved in that trifecta championship. Um, but I think you know, obviously Chad was my rah rah guy, and uh, you know, it meant a lot. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was nice. It was nice to be the the inaugural champ. And, and the funny story is um, that belt weighs nine hundred pounds. Really? It really does. It's unbelievable. I've never I've never held a belt. That was, you know, that's that's a genuine like shoot belt, man. That that thing was wild, and um, like I just did a show for IWA Intense Wrestling Alliance up in, uh, you know, up in uh, was it uh, Nutley a uh -huh. couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was four champions. It was a summit match, and you had four champions, and uh, the other three champions, you know, not knocking the companies they work for, obviously, yeah. but they each had their own, you know, their their cha respective championships. And when the referee had to come collect the belts, uh -huh. and he went around, he grabbed everyone's belt, and then you know I handed him the trifecta belt, and he basically dropped it because yeah. it was so much heavier than all the other belts. Oh my god, that's funny! Yeah, yeah, yeah I, it was hilarious. You know, talking about heavy belt, I met DDP right, and he right. had the world title that he had, and I didn't know he was right. going to put. It. He had somebody behind him that uh, put it on me. He was like just holding the belt the whole time. And right. he would get, he would ask people, but he didn't ask me the guy. He just he just put it on me, and I yeah same thing. I almost dropped the world heavyweight championship from WCW. Yeah. I'm like holy shit, like, this thing's like well, a million pounds. Enormous. That belt is that belt is like half the size of my body. Basically, that thing's huge. Yeah, and that's I mean you have a beautiful championship belt. I mean a lot of pride, like you said, and of course I mean you're you're wrestling at a, you know LTW SWF uh, uh, standalone wrestling pro wrestling after dark wherever. You know this. Wherever the trifecta is going to be, you're. I mean, you're, right. you're going to be part of that. Well, actually, I actually lost the belt in a screw job uh -huh. um, at the IWA show. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We had that summit match where basically what had happened was you had four different champions, four different companies, mm -hmm. and uh, there's going to be some payback <laughs> soon because uh, you know first person to pin any of the other opponents won all four belts and. Mm -hmm. Astro Morales stuck his nose in my business, and basically we brawled to the back. And while the finish was happening in the ring, I'm outside the arena brawling with Astro Morales. Yeah. So I couldn't stop the pin, and now I no longer have the trifecta championship. Oh wow! <laughs> well, you gotta get that. You gotta get that beauty back. I will. I will. It's it's either it's either the trifecta championship 
or the SWF Championship, or the Standalone Championship, mm -hmm. or the Pro Wrestling After Dark. One of the one of those will be around my waist by the end of the summer. Well, absolutely, I hope so because uh, you know, and that's one of the the best things. I mean, we were at uh, Mega Slam and we saw you uh, an Astro. I mean, what a match! It really, <laughs> hey, uh, and he uh, he the Astro can go, man. I have mm -hmm. nothing but respect for Astro as much as he kind of screwed me over in that last match. Um, Mm -hmm. Astro, you know, we, we, we didn't know each other very well. We, we really hit it off uh, within the last couple of months, you know, ever since those um, the Titan shows that he, I think it was originally we met at the, uh, it actually wasn't really a Titan show. I guess it was uh, the Val's Pal show mm -hmm. uh, when they did the 40-man uh, rumble. We really, we, we really hit it off there. We, we have a, you know, a lot in common, and uh, Astro's just a, a really good guy and a hell of a friggin' worker. The guy, you know, he, that, that match, and I will give him all the credit. Mm -hmm. I had some spots in my head for the, um, for our match at Mega Slam, but he, he really came up with the rest of that match. I, I basically had the opening spot in my head and the finish, and, um, he had, he, he, he towed the line on the rest of that match. Wow, well, yeah. I mean, he, he, him and Steve Lugo are so talented. I can't wait to see you yeah. get, you know, in the ring with those two guys and, and, uh, yeah. Steve, Steve's again another great guy, you know, and they're, they're, they're two pieces in the pot, the two of them, and Steve, Steve's another great guy. Soft-spoken, yeah. it's funny, he's, he's really kind of the, the opposite of his uh, gimmick, but um, yeah, another great guy. Yeah, you know, one thing I love about Steve, he loves comic books and uh, movies. Uh, are you the same way? Do you like comic books? Do you like movies? Is there something you know, like I, you... I, I didn't grow up, you know, it's funny, I, I didn't do a lot of comic books when I was a kid. Uh -huh. Or now, I, I, I'm not a superhero guy. I never was. Uh -huh. uh, even the movies now, I can't stand them. <laughs> you know, um, the only, it's funny, dude, when I was a kid, the only uh, comic books I really read, they redid, I was always a big horror movie junkie. Mm -hmm. And um, even when I was a young child, my mother, God rest her soul, she would bring me to the horror movies, even when I was like 10 years old, and bring me these terrible movies I should have been at. But um, they re-released the old DC because Tales from the Crypt got big, you know, obviously the late 80s. So he re-released all the old Tales from the Crypt comic books. And I think those are the only comic books I think I ever owned. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's cool that you are such a big horror movie fan. That's pretty cool. Uh, you will not see me there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but you're a big sports guy, right? I mean, you have your teams. Yeah, you know, I'm a big baseball guy. I love you know, my Mets and uh, my Niners with football. Uh, but that's, you know, that's really it. I, I, basketball, uh, I, I can take it or leave it. Both, uh, you know, my son played basketball mm -hmm. and my stepson played basketball and uh, I was terrible. And in fact, the stepson went to college on a scholarship for basketball oh, wow. and uh, I couldn't, you know, I they would go out and shoot around and stuff and, you know, Dad, come on, come on, play. And I, uh, <laughs> I was awful. I, I'm still awful. Yeah. They're having a big basketball tournament or, or game, heels versus faces. I think out in Trenton, if I'm not mistaken. I think Shane Fair is putting that on me. Not Shane yeah. Fair, who's a great guy. Yeah. Um, and they had asked me, and I was like, Nah, man, <laughs> <laughs> I am the absolute worst when it comes to basketball. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sit out on that one without embarrassing myself. Yeah. Well, yeah. At least you, at least you're uh, aware to recognize that you're not good, but uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, you and I have been suffering Met fans for a while. Uh, yeah, we've had yeah. ups and downs over the years. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about this season? It's, it's a long season. Obviously, mm -hmm. every baseball fan knows it's a long season. It's only June. Uh, it's first place. That's that's all that matters right now. And then, yeah. you know, first place can quickly become last place. As, as, as you know, obviously, you remember two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah. How quickly first place can become last place. Um, yeah. So, you know, this time of year, uh, the only thing is, is, is as much of a fan as I am of baseball and the, obviously the New York Mets, mm -hmm. it's so hard to watch baseball this time of year, especially mm -hmm. living on, you know, I live eight blocks from the beach. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am an outdoor guy mm -hmm. uh, you know, a million times over. And if I can be on the beach or I can be out in my backyard in my garden, I, I want to be there. So I actually bought a little transistor radio. It reminds me so much of being a kid because I have the little transistor radio that gets WSAN. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, now it's WCBS. Yeah. 880 that does the games. And I uh, I bring it to the beach with me so I can at least listen to the games on the radio while I'm sitting there uh, enjoying.
during the sun and a couple of cocktails. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know the Mets. I always say this about the Mets. Out of all the commentary teams, they have the best I think ever. <laughs> you know, Howie Rose. I, so at this point, Howie Rose's voice mm-hmm. is just ingrained in my head, and sure. um, everyone kind of. Um, you know, when they think of the Mets, they think of, you know, Keith and Gary Cohen and all that. But mm-hmm. I, Howie Rose is the guy that's stuck in my head just because, to me, baseball has always been a radio thing. Because mm-hmm. it's on in the background. You can hear it if there's a big play. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it's on. I, I can't, I, just like, again, this time of year, I can't sit in front of the TV and watch mm-hmm. it. So I, I, I always err with uh, Howie, Howie Rose because that's how I listen to the game. Yeah, and the cool thing about Howie Rose is that even if you're, like you said, you're you're in the car, you're listening to it on the radio, I mean, it's so vivid, you feel like you're there. And you're kind of like, Absolutely. you're driving, and you're like, oh, I need to pay attention to the road, because I feel like I'm in City Field. Yeah. I remember they're playing. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool that you like, uh, you know, you're a Met fan like me, and hopefully uh, take that championship, because I haven't seen one in my lifetime, so I, I'm begging yeah, for this. You know, it's, it's, that's, which is wild, yeah, I, I mean... And- I was only 10 years old. Well, I wasn't even 10. I was nine yeah. in 86. So, um, I got to, I got to see it. Um, I wasn't terribly vested at that point, obviously, cause I was a young kid, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, no, that was, that was, that was, that was a wild year in 86. And, and obviously they would, they should have won in, uh, you know, 88, uh, you know, with the Dodgers winning that year and everything. I got some great books. I got this, this great book called the, the worst team money could buy about the Mets, mm-hmm. you know, and that fall from grace after the 86 season. And, you know, there's, there's some there's some really cool stuff. If I see it at another show, I'll bring that book with me. I'll let you borrow It's great stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and I'll never forget Gary Cohen one time, like you were saying before, from first to last. I remember he was saying, and it was like the last game of uh, 2007, and he's like, the Mets are not just going to be bored anymore. They'll just be inactive. And I was like, holy shit. Like, he just, like, I was like, he just, like, summed that up so well. And I was like, yeah, because they only had, like, what, they had needed seven games to clinch, and they had 17 games left to play. And I was like, I was like, guys, was, get your uh, head together. That was 2008. Oh, 2008. Yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the game that, uh, the, the last game, both years, 2007 and 2008, they both blew it the last game in Miami. Mm-hmm. And uh, that first, that 2007 season, when um, Tommy Glavin basically shit the bed, you know, yeah. in the first inning of the game and gave up like eight runs in the first inning. And then after the game, you know, the season was over. Yeah. And after the game, Tommy Glavin sat there. This was his last year. And he sat there. He was like, hey, you listen, you know, I don't know why you guys are being so hard on me. Nobody died. And just everybody, like, like that was his exit out of town, you know. And he was yeah. always a Mets killer with the Braves. So when he left and basically saying, hey, nobody died when he just crapped, he was their ace and he crapped the bed, you know, yeah. last game of the season. That, uh, <laughs> that soured me a lot uh, <laughs> on Tommy Glenn. Yeah, those Braves were not fun. I remember my, I, as a kid, I had a John Rocker card and I ripped <laughs> it, I ripped it up in front of my dad. And my dad just had like the biggest smile. He's like, "I I might have been a bad dad, but this is a good moment here. <laughs> I did a, I, I did have, something I have right." A story about John Rocker. So uh, when I was wrestling a lot back uh-huh. in the early two thousand, two thousand late nineties, mm-hmm. uh, I had taken a job with uh, my old tag partner Ron Post, mm-hmm. and we were uh, bouncing at Martell's Tiki Bar in Point Pleasant. Oh wow! So here you know we see this like hustle and bustle coming in on like a saturday night the the braves were in town to play the mets up in new york Mm -hmm. and here's john rocker and he's at the tiki bar and everybody sees him he's got his friggin' jersey on like the jerk that he was just because he wanted the you know the guy wanted the attention yeah and um it it didn't take but maybe 20 minutes he was in uh you know on the pier at martell's and there was a fight and we, uh, Ron and I, got to throw John Rocker out of Martell's Tiki Bar, so that was fun. Yeah, that's wow. awesome. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you guys did throw him right off the boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. But I mean, you're also no stranger to championships, and uh, you know, and you are also the G, you were the GTS champion. And uh, how did it feel winning that championship, the GTS title? That you know, it, it's funny. Uh, I've known Dave. Um, for over and and do hop i've known them both over 20 years now they mm-hmm. they came up through also through ronnie post and uh the acwa uh-huh. and uh i kind of lost contact with them you know they
they, you know, they went their own way, and you know, Dave started the whole thing with the, you know, the, the action figures and whatnot, and mm-hmm. it became this thing, this kind of underground YouTube wrestling group, and it, it's it's wild. They have, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it when I found out what was going on over there that they they had this huge, huge, huge cult like following. Yeah, and um, it blew my mind once I, you know, once I found out about the gimmick, I, I started, you know, I watched a couple of videos on YouTube, and like, holy crap, you know, they they got thousands, and thousands, and thousands, and thousands of views immediately as soon as they post anything. So that was awesome, and um, so I, you know, once they started really getting back into things with Titan and everybody, um, I said, hey, you know, I called Dave up. I was like, hey, you know, let me come down. This way, it'll. Uh, I get. I have. I have somewhere to be in between. You know, Titan shows. You know, standalone show, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it'll keep me fresh, and I'll be able to work with you know the younger guys that are there, and kind of give you know a heads up on what they. You know, you could do this, you could do that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it was. It was a good time. It was. Um, <laughs> it was a good time and to to be able to grab that belt. Uh, basically, in what amounts to my first real match with them was mm-hmm. uh, was. Great. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and like you said, and it's so weird, right? Because you know people crap on them all the time, but they're they're putting out quality content. And yeah. uh, like you said, I mean, you put out one interview with one of their stars, and somehow that thing just blows up. I mean, the fan it's base wild. is so crazy. It really is. Well, I'll tell you, they um, at that LTW is kind of yeah, like I say, it was like a joint show. It was LTW, uh-huh. it was like standalone and SWF, and then. And, uh, Dave Grimm and you know everybody showed up to that show, so it was also like a kind of GTS show. Mm-hmm. And my God, when Dave got out of his car, and uh, those kids were waiting outside, those kids went bonkers for him. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, it, you you could have thought, you know, that was the Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. getting out of the car. They really lost their minds. Where it was really cool to see that just the influence. That uh, the social media and, and these streaming platforms have now on professional wrestling. Yeah, and you know, you know what's funny? I think it's they're, they're relatable, right? Because to these kids, they're collecting the same figures. They're right. doing these vlogs. You know, they're, you're really getting to see like the real person sometimes. Um, right. So yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, it's a different time, but yeah. it's so crazy because I couldn't imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin doing something this cool back in the day. You know, and it's it's it, it's it, again, it's a whole different world. I, mm-hmm. I no one could ever have imagined. That, you know, I can imagine some of the older guys, you know, basically rolling over in their graves at this point. That you met, you you have what amounts to a quote unquote backyard set. Yeah, um, that gets more views probably than you know some of the some of the bigger indie groups do. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. and. Um, yeah, it, it's wild, and you know you can't knock the kids, you know the workers, the boys, whatever you want to call them, that do the shows because these kids, are, these uh, some of them are really, really, really talented, mm-hmm. and uh, some of them once they get a break, it, you know, a lot of them don't need a break outside of the GTS shows because they have their platform there. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they want to go on and move on and move on and move on. Um, they already have that exposure, and they have already are, are battle tested, quote unquote. You know, they uh, they've been able to do some great matches and whatnot. They'll they'll, they'll go far, hopefully. I, there's definitely two kids down there that I think um, once they and they're young guys, mm-hmm. and once they get their you know their, their their bearings about them and really start to focus on um, what they want to do and where they want to go, the the kids are going to be uh, big. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome to hear. Uh, on your downtime, is there like a certain movie or TV show or music you like to listen to? I, well, I love music. Mm-hmm. Um, I read a lot. Uh, as silly, as I, not, I, I almost said as silly as it is. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I read a lot. I, I try not to watch too much TV. Um, I have no attention span for television anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, when my son moved back in with us, uh, my son's 23, so he, you know he's at that age where there's no attention span anymore either. It's basically just about drinking and partying. Uh, but he's a big YouTube guy, so it's these quick 10-minute videos, five, you know, five-minute video, whatever it is. And from sitting around with him, maybe watching some of that stuff, I've become so just disconnected to regular TV mm-hmm. that uh, I, I can't watch 
regular TV anymore. If, if I watch anything, it's YouTube, like a quick five minute, uh, you know, documentary on, you know, uh, fish or something like sharks <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. You know what I mean? Or there's this great video um, thing I watch called Company Man, where they on YouTube where they go over the history, like the rise and downfall of different big corporations. Oh and, yeah, you know, it's silly crap like that. But that's yeah, that's it. I, I really don't have an attention span. But I my, meanwhile, I can sit here and read half a half a book. Like I just got done with a. Uh, um, Great book called uh, Reagan Land about you know about Ronald the ascendancy of Ronald Reagan and, and the, the the religious right you know mm-hmm. and um, it was a, you know a, a fourteen hundred page book and I basically oh, banged it out in the course of like two and a half weeks because I'll sit here and just I have the attention span for that I just don't have the attention span for TV anymore. Wow, that's awesome that you could bang out a book like that in two and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it would take me like two and a half it's years. All night when I'm, I, I, I spend a lot of time in bed because I'm up so early for mm-hmm. the gym in the morning. I get up around three thirty in the morning to go to the gym, and um, so I'm in bed by like I'm literally doing the podcast right now, laying in bed. Oh, yeah. um, I'm I'm in bed by like seven o'clock, and so between seven and let's say nine o'clock, those two hours, I'm usually reading until it, I'll fall asleep, and I'll always have to reread the last chapter because I, you know, at that point I'm half asleep and I don't remember anything I read. Yeah, you know, you're gonna laugh at me. I have that Mick Foley book, Have a Nice Day. I got it when it yeah. first came out. I'm probably right. still like three pages into that. So. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> I think I, I think I, I bought that when it first came out. Also, I banged that out pretty quick. Wow, that's um, incredible. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was, uh, that was. I actually have a stack of books literally right next to my bed that I haven't even touched yet. Oh, that wow. I'm still like I'm jonesing to touch. I just got to keep. Blowing through the books, uh, that Nitro book that was a great that was a great Nitro book. It was just called Nitro. Uh-huh. But, uh, I can't remember the guy who put it out. Maybe like two years ago at this point, mm-hmm. and that that thing's about a thousand pages. Uh-huh. And uh, but that was so riveting. It really was. It still is, it sounds uh, great book. And that thing, I think I, I think I blew that out in a little over a week. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. And it's good. I mean, it's awesome to hear that you're into music, that you're into reading. Uh, uh, I'm sorry the TV isn't really holding your attention, but I mean, there's so many great books out there, like you've been saying. And, Absolutely. And it's awesome because you're part of the trifecta. Uh, there's so many different wrestlers that can come through from from big names from from the WWE or AEW. Um, is there anybody in particular that you want to face? You know, it's it's funny. I, I right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, uh, so there's a couple of guys. I, I, I love Fox Vineyard. He hasn't rolled through the trifecta stuff yet, but I've worked with him, obviously, at Titan. Yeah. Also, Wrecking Ball Ligurski, great guy. Another guy who, uh, you know, he's, and he's, he's amazing at what he does. He's another guy I want to face. Um, right now, the, in the actual trifecta, within the three groups, I think probably Sean Donovan... Obviously, he's got that belt. He's got that standalone yeah. belt. And that's a beautiful, beautiful belt. Yeah, it is. By the way, and um, Sean's a great old school type worker. You know, like almost like a Terry Funk type. And um, he's he's the guy right now within that trifecta group that I really like to uh, get you know tussle around with. That'd be absolutely awesome because uh, yeah, Sean Donovan. He was he was just a guest uh, not too long ago, and uh, yeah, I mean he he really. But the thing is, if you go toe toe with Sean Donovan, I mean, you got to be on point with it with your promos because he'll just he'll just rip anybody uh, apart. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's great at his promos. I've never been a great promo guy. Yeah, I can cut some promos, but uh, uh so I've never been a great promo guy. But yeah. he he and Savage. Uh, Gene Curcio up at the Mega not Mega Slam. Um, gosh, the, uh, the 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 show that was up in Lindhurst a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Shockwave. Uh, Shockwave. Yeah, sorry. They um they tore the, they tore it down. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, if, if it's it's available anywhere. I think it's available on um, IWTV mm-hmm. as Shockwave right now. And uh, if you get a chance to watch what Jay and Sean did at that show, mm-hmm. um, especially the fact that it was nine hundred degrees outside on a black canvas, they <laughs> they uh, they tore it up, and it, it was it was it was awesome to watch. It really was. I was. Mm-hmm. I was standing at the curtain the whole time. Even you know, I felt bad because the curtain kept blowing, and a little bit of breeze there was. And 
Mm-hmm. Everybody could see me standing behind the curtain watching. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> well, yeah, you can't, you know, if you're watching good wrestling, no one's going to fault you for that. Yeah. Uh, and it's weird because AEW, right? They have the biggest announced team in the world. They have Mark Henry and they have the big show. Uh, have you ever thought about doing commentary or being a manager or, or training people once you hang up the well, boots? Eventually, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, you know, be a, I guess it's like a, what you would, it's not really an agent mm-hmm. in the, you know, in, in the Indies. There's no real agents. Mm-hmm. But I guess just, uh, just, you know, a locker room, the locker room guy, you know, it's, it's, um, helping people come up with finishes, you know, things of that nature. I, I definitely want to be involved somehow. Um, I, I don't think I could manage mm-hmm. just because of my size. I don't want to take any heat off the guy I'm managing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's, a, you know, that's a big problem. There's some, you know, there's some places out there. I've seen some indie shows recently on, on IWTV mm-hmm. where, there's referees that are bigger than the guys in the ring, and all the heat is taken right off of the two guys working. You know, at least in my eyes, and uh, there are also their managers who are bigger than their charges. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that kind of you lose the magic a little bit because uh, you know you want the wrestlers kind of at least in my eyes to seem larger than life. Mm-hmm. And when you know someone who's not wrestling in that match is bigger than the guys who are working, it kind of takes away from it a little bit for me. Um, kind of like I can't remember the guy's name. The the the, uh, the old UFC referee. Uh, he was a big guy with black hair. He was like their most famous guy for a long oh, time. He was like their he, main he looked, ref. Yeah, he looked like Tommy uh, Dreamer. Yeah, he looked like Tommy Dreamer. Right, yeah, right, that, that guy, guy. Yeah, and he was bigger than half the guys that were <laughs> yeah. fighting. And I was always like, geez, this is the guy that should be fighting. You know what I mean? And yeah. that always kind of, for whatever reason, always struck me as odd. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely couldn't. I don't think I could manage or ref. Uh-huh. But uh, as much as I would like to, but um, I would I would definitely like to be a locker room guy, you know, just coming up with finishes because at some shows, you know, that I've been to um, recently, you know, you, I, I've seen the same finish in two different matches, and mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, geez, you know, that that shouldn't be happening. So you really need somebody in the back, kind of going over to each per, you know, each match, and kind of going over finishes where you, you know what you're going to be, making sure people stick to their times. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I'd really like to do after I decide to uh, burn my boots. Yeah, and I know you talked about Sean Donovan being the dream opponent, one of them. Uh, my dream opponent for you is now that he's been released from WWE, is definitely like Braun Strowman. I'd love to see you guys. Yeah, Big- that, a, you, that guy's a monster. <laughs> yeah. That guy is a complete monster. Like, I'm a bigger guy, but that guy is like... Oh, no, I think I, I, you could take him. He's, he's like six, I think he's like six, eight, six, nine, what is it? I don't even know how big he is. He's... he's He's a big guy. Yeah. You know, it's funny, though, because I, I always underestimate my, my size, you mm-hmm. know, uh, my height and my, my weight and what I look like. I never see myself as what I, other people see me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I recently got into at that IWA show, I was in there with TJ uh, Marconi, and he's a tall guy. He's a big guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I got in there with him, I'm like, oh. Well, oh, maybe maybe not so big. Maybe I'm bigger than I thought I was because you know he's t- towering over everybody as he stands up, and then I stand up in the ring next to him, and I'm like, oh, all right, maybe it's not so bad. So yeah, Strowman Strowman is a uh, Strowman's a beast of a guy though. So it, <clears> it, I would definitely I would definitely work him. It would just be oof. Yeah, you know, so uh, I met him. Lot. He's a younger guy too, so it's like, oh man, you know. <laughs> at 45 is like come on uh, uh, just please take care of me <laughs> yeah. yeah I got to meet him too and he like towered over me I was like holy shit this oh, guy's yeah. massive uh, just a massive guy and um, uh, but I wanted to ask you this at Boardwalk Buzz I mean you have the Irish and uh, Italian connection uh, <laughs> what, what can you tell us about that match I, I, listen, I'm pissed that I lost that belt uh-huh. and that's all those two kids have to know I I, I I like I like Tony I like Pete yeah but it, it's you know it, it like like you know I put on social media it's like you know I want to apologize to these kids in advance thanks for coming because mm-hmm. uh, yeah I'm just gonna I'm gonna house both pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> wow well I mean you know at least you're being honest you gave them the the game plan I don't think there's much for them to do right I mean no. you know you... No, there's not much they're gonna be able to do unless they can get the jump on me and unless Somebody changes the uh, the rules to a no holds barred. Maybe they stand a fighting chance. Otherwise, yeah. I won't. I wouldn't give that match over two minutes. Yeah, 
I mean, and if people want to go back and they can check some of your matches out there, I mean, you've been in the ring with uh, Monster Mac, and, and you even helped Dan Moff out a couple of weeks ago too. Yep. Uh, I mean, you, you've beaten up a hot dog. I mean, there's so many cool things you've done. Um, you've uh, you wrestled actually the guy you just mentioned previously, uh, Fox Vineyard, and a Gigantuan. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was uh, that was an interesting show. Yeah, <laughs> that was an interesting yeah. match. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, plus, you've been in the ring with, uh, you know, uh, Tommy the Moose, uh, Dalton, the Dilf Boy. Right. And, right. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, and plus, I mean, we didn't even talk about this, but you've been in the ring with John Wade, uh, Wayne Murdoch, Murdo- uh, right. Murdoch, can't even talk today, huh? Uh, Astro Morales, I mean, uh, so there's so many great matches they can check out. Plus, you know, uh, they have all your GTS stuff that you've been a part of on YouTube. Yep. I uh, wish, you know, and that's another thing with social media now, you know, I wrestled back in the day with like Tommy Rumsby and guys like mm-hmm. that year, you know, back in the early 2000s. I got to, because I was always the bigger guy on the card when it came to the, you know, the local guys. Back then, I got to wrestle all the older WWF guys that were coming through. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm little, little by little, I'm having people starting to send me videos, mm-hmm. which is cool. Um, like like uh, Arcadia, Matt, he just sent me a, a video the other day from a tag match back in like 2000 that we did in Trenton, I think. And um, but I got to you know I got to work with Demolition, I got to work with the Honky Tonk Man, um, I worked with Bruce Beefcake, uh, all the Georgie Animal Steel, Sergeant Slaughter. I've worked with all the Bundy. I've worked with all those guys back in the you know the, the mm. early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. I actually fractured my spine against uh, Brutus Beefcake when really? I was like 22 years old. Yeah, I fell from the top rope to the outside of the floor in uh, Kingston, Pennsylvania. The, the Kingston, huge place, which was wild. The place was the size of Convention Hall in Asbury Park. This enormous building. I think I actually was talking to Johnny Moran the one day about it because mm. that's where he grew up watching the WWE. you're recovering i'm glad you're kicking ass today because uh you, you know you're one of those uh, fan favorites that people just want to see i mean real. i mean i'm gonna be honest there's there's not a lot of attractions and you're one of those attraction people like people see you and they're like holy god like this, this oh, is, i appreciate that yeah people are like this is a monster this guy's gonna uh kill somebody in that ring i mean you're looking at like 90 i mean a lot of these guys are like what 120 pounds 200 pounds and and uh you know, you hear it all the time on the Jim Cornette or, or J, J, uh, Jim Ross podcast that, like, these guys are just doing flips. I mean, here you are. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're throwing guys around. I mean, like, crazy. You know, you, you, and, you know, I don't want to crap on anybody or mm-hmm. anything like that. And, and here, this will be my uh, kind of my soapbox thing. Um, you have to look, you have to be, I don't know how to word this. A lot of people don't, when they go to a professional wrestling event, Mm -hmm. because of what they see on TV, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not knocking anybody, obviously, but they see bigger guys on TV. They see a Roman Reigns, or they see a Cena, or they see a Braun Strowman. Mm -hmm. They see these guys, these guys are monsters. Um, And then they'll come to, the wrestling's in town, they'll come come to a, a indie show, and some of the guys look like the you know the guy who's outside mowing your lawn, mm-hmm. and there's nothing that differentiates that person. They're, they're not getting the same thing, and that could turn people off. You know, uh, maybe they won't come back again unless that smaller guy put on a five star match where they really wowed everybody. Yeah, it, it's you know uh, it, it, it's it's tough. It's tough, and not everybody has the time to kind of get bigger and get in shape or, or has the patience to do it, but. Mm-hmm. You have to have pride in your look um, because that exude, you know, that, that people see that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm always a big proponent of listen, just hit the gym so you don't look like, you know, you, the, 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 guy, the guy's, you know, best friend or bowling buddy that he goes out with every night. You know what I mean? Because what, what's the attraction there? What's, you know, the, the old Vince McMahon thing was, you know, he, you, he has to. My my guys have to be a guy who 
and, and I'm paraphrasing here, obviously, mm. but if you saw this guy in an airport, he's going to turn your head in an airport. Oh, yeah. He's going to make you look. Uh, not a lot of guys do that anymore in the <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. so it is what it is, and, and it's funny too because you said like somebody, uh, and usually if it's like a smaller guy, you know, like a Macho Man, they have the personality that's over the top that makes them look bigger. Right, uh, but you know what? But that's also the thing, you know. When 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 Randy Savage was, it wasn't a small guy. Yeah. He, he, you know, he just happened to be in the land of giants at that time. Yeah, it's true. He, you know, he he was, I don't know, was savage was probably six one, mm-hmm. six two. Yeah, you know, two hundred and something pounds. That's a big guy. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's you know it's he, he wasn't a small guy, and, and none of those guys were, especially back in the eighties, WWF. Everybody was again, it was the land of giants. Mm-hmm. But um, it's 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 something you have to. The, the, I think the magic is gone. The, the you know the the when when someone comes to a show and and you know the guy is in there and he weighs 125 pounds of bricks in his pockets, and you know all the good on him if they can jump and they can fly and they can do, you know, 25 hurricanes and whatnot and take 32 DDTs and not sell it whatnot, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> it's it, it's the attraction like you say it's an attraction yeah. that puts asses in the seats and. Um, and that's just the way it is, you know. You, you guys, you got guys like uh, you know, like myself, or at least in the, in the trifecta group, like Danny Moff. Danny Moff yeah. is literally a, a building with legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and you got you guys, you got guys like that, and I've been wrecking ball over a tight. Yeah, and guys like yeah. that, these huge guys, and they're attraction. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, like you started coming out, I had to, you know, hold my girlfriend's eyes. I'm like, you can't, you can't see this. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely, one of the uh, you know premier athletes at uh, you know part of the trifecta. I mean, you, I mean, I, I can't wait to see you in just a couple of weeks uh, at Boardwalk Buzz. I mean, uh, can you just tell people where they can get you on social media if they want to see you? Yeah, I use so social media. I just use my regular shoot name. Uh, it's Vince Series, um, C E R E S, uh, on Instagram, Twitter, um, and Facebook. It's they're, they're just my regular everyday profiles. I do. I, I obviously I advertise all the shows, mm-hmm. um, you know, vigorously because uh, we have a the, the trifecta brand has a stack summer coming up i mean it's it's literally just about every week at this point there's another show that you know we got shows coming back to the jersey shore and tom Zerber, uh in september you got shows up in Booton, up in northwest jersey which used to be a hotbed for a long time for uh for the swf that shows up there in july back in home Dell in july with the show where ron simmons is going to do a personal appearance yeah um just it just show after show after show after show, but right now what everything's you know what what the world is watching is uh, Boardwalk Buds, and uh, mm-hmm. we're 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 only one week or you know basically a week and a half away mm-hmm. from what what is going to be probably one of the wildest weekends in uh, not only New Jersey uh, wrestling but uh, just New Jersey in general when it comes to the uh, the, the lifestyle uh, convention uh, the cannabis convention. Yeah, like you said, it's going to be wild. Of course, you know, we've said this before, Val Venus is going to be there. Randy Hogan, man. Randy and, uh, Hogan. Uh, they got the uh, Sid is going to be there. Yeah, the Sheik um, from uh, Young Sheik, Rock. Yeah, the Sheik from the Young Rock show. Yeah, um, yeah there's, really there's nice. going to be, uh, the, it's going to be quite a, uh, like Kevin Sullivan will be there. Yeah, um, food it's trucks. Going be, it's going to be quite the event. Food trucks, you have bands basically playing almost 24 hours a day different bands they're gonna have a great motorhead cover band there um you have obviously five wrestling shows i believe between yeah. the iw uh, the um icw and standalone um you have a, a movie room a screening room where they're gonna show you know basically cheech and chong and reefer madness just over you know different movies throughout the day you're gonna have speed dating you're gonna have a cannabis infused nightclub you're going to have just, I mean, there, there's too much to even mention. <laughs> there's a, a, a comedy lounge that they're going to do stand up comedy uh, every day. Uh, it's it's going to be a wild, wild weekend. Yeah. 
you know, the, I gotta say this. They should have booked. I don't know if you know the stepdads, right? But no, I'm not familiar with. Uh, yeah, the tag team. Like they're they're awesome, but like they're they're good guys, right? And right. Uh, they should just come out like at one of the shows and just be like, "No weed for you." Like, like put it down. <laughs> like they Almost would get like the most heat. Type thing to yeah. Stop people from, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So, or you could come in and, you know, paint yourself green and just, when people are high, just be like, pop your head out and stuff like that and surprise them. They'll probably jump or something like that or giggle. I think so. they'll probably, I, I know when they were basically, uh, they had a show um, at a 420 event uh-huh. on 420 on April 20th in Atlantic City, and they had a, uh, a, a pot leaf, a wrestling pot leaf. Oh, yeah. At the show, yeah. And I, th- I think he, I think he beat Dalton if I'm uh, not oh my mistaken. Gosh. I think he actually, no, I think he actually beat uh, Anthony, Anthony, uh, who, uh, Tony Cheney, uh-huh. who I will, who will have the uh, lucky draw of uh, working me at the uh, Boardwalk Bud show. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you said it. He's unlucky. And uh, Pete Corvus, too. I mean, if I was if I was them, I would be punching my ticket out of uh, Atlantic City. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I, I'm hoping that uh, apparently Pete uh, is uh, a shoot bagpipe player. Like he can actually play the Scottish oh, bagpipe. Really? So uh, or the Irish bagpipes, I believe. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm hoping that he plays himself to the ring just huh. so I can break the bagpipes over his head at the show. Well, he might need a, uh, you know, he might need somebody playing him uh, to his grave once he's yeah, they'll, with you. Yeah, so. the funeral dirge playing for him on the way out. Wow. Well, absolutely. And of course, this has been Wrestling IQ 101. Cerebus, I'd like to say thank you for joining us today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. And I can't wait to see what you, you know, where you uh, end up, uh, you know, in, in time. And uh, for us, this has been Wrestling IQ 101.